Welcome, my friends. Come, take a seat by the fire. It's time for Campfire Stories with Rosie. <laughs> People Keep Disappearing from Elevators by I Like Beef 69 from Reddit. The link to this story will be in the description below. Hi, this is Detective Dave Cox with a public service announcement from NYPD. As well as wanting to wish you all the happy festivities this fine August, I'm here to remind you to avoid using elevators unless absolutely necessary. And of course, not to enter any Sumac branded elevators at all cost. You can recognize Sumac elevators by the logo embedded on the side wall. If you do spot one or suspect so, please report it to us as soon as possible. Thank you. If you're reading this document, you probably already know about the danger. I just wanted the header to serve as a reminder just in case you forgot. I simply cannot stress this enough. Do not take risks with the elevators. The reason I'm writing this document is so that all you journalists get off our backs and let us investigate. This is a summary of all we know so far, much of which you've already heard in the news. We're not hiding any relevant information from the press or the public. The department will not be taking any questions or interviews regarding the case until further notice. Timeline. June 9th, 2017. On the afternoon of June 9th, 14-year-old Jennifer Hortworth went to visit a classmate, Mike Terrence, at his new apartment at 21 Avenue. The apartment building is new and equipped with CCTV cameras as well as a recently installed Sumac brand elevator. Mike noticed Jen from his porch and waved to her. She waved back to him and entered the building lobby. CCTV footage last captured her going inside the elevator shaft. That evening, Jennifer's parents called Mike, asking for their daughter's whereabouts. After learning that she had not arrived at Mike's home, the parents notified police, 9.32 p.m. Police promised to investigate, but did not have any reason to regard her disappearance as suspicious. It was only when she didn't arrive to school the next day that police began to investigate more thoroughly. There was no CCTV footage of Jennifer leaving the apartment complex and therefore police concluded that one of the residents had something to do with the disappearance. However, all residents of the complex complied to a warrantless house search, and no trace of Jennifer was found. Given the circumstances of her disappearance, Jennifer is most likely the first victim of the Sumic elevators. July 24, 2007 the disappearance of 27-year-old Heather Hayes is our first confirmed victim of the Sumic Elevators. Heather worked as a data analyzer for well-known cable company Simtax at their headquarters in 53 Lake Street. The building has extensive CCTV coverage, including inside the elevator. At 12.17 p.m., Heather entered the Sumic branded elevator, assumingly to go outside for smoke. She is not seen again. When she does not come home that night, her husband calls the police. Police, through CCTV footage and witnesses, learn that Heather never left the building. Her disappearance is caught in the elevator CCTV footage. Many of you have already seen the now public footage. Heather enters the elevator and presses the button to the lobby. She appears to be browsing her phone when the CCTV suddenly goes black for several frames. When it turns back on, Heather is missing. Police dismiss this as a technical bug, and a repairman is sent to fix the problems with the CCTV. July 25, 2017 Seeking further information, fellow NYPD police officer John Schaff returns to the Simtax headquarters to interview work colleagues about Heather's disappearance. At 10.54 a.m., after he's done questioning, he takes the elevator back down and is never seen again. After failing to respond to several radio call-ins, I go myself to investigate. The CCTV footage resembles that of Heather's disappearance. It was at this point we began to suspect foul play. We searched the elevator shaft for anything suspicious, but found nothing. The security man that was in charge of watching the CCTV cameras was taken to the police station, but was later released due to lack of evidence. August 12, 2017. 
Christian Carl, a 42-year-old private plumber from Maine, was last spotted exiting a customer's apartment. The customer had called in for Christian to fix the sink. After doing so, the customer accompanied Christian to the elevator at approximately 3.30 p.m. When Christian did not come home by the next morning, his wife alerted the police. Upon arriving, police noticed that his service car was still parked outside the apartment. Police began noticing striking similarities to the other disappearances. August 17, 2017 This is the most prolific disappearance of all, and has been extensively covered on the media. Seven employees, Cheryl Marsh, Marcus Wheeler, Jana Carroll, Myrtle Klein, Louise McCormick, Willis Castillo, and John Allen, working at the Plaza Skyscraper, disappeared after taking the Sumic elevator to the lobby at 6.33 p.m. The elevator stopped at floors 6, 5, and 3 to pick up more employees. The disappearance is suspected to have taken place between the third and first floor. Theories and Investigation Following the August 12th disappearance, we set up a joint task force to investigate the elevator disappearances as related. Sadly, none of the crime scenes left any forensic evidence that we can connect. However, we did notice that the disappearances all happened in New York, in Sumic branded elevators, and that all elevators had been installed or repaired recently. Our first line of investigation was to question the manufacturers of these elevators. However, the lack of information has left us even more baffled. When we interviewed the contractors who hired the company, they all claimed that Sumic Elevators representatives had reached them by phone or in person. The company marketed itself as a newly formed startup, claiming to transform the way elevators worked. They provided a construction license and offered a very low price, so the constructors agreed. When we tried calling the company back, the line was dead. We also found no records of the company ever being registered. We couldn't even identify the man who was installing the elevators. Therefore, we ask that anyone who recognizes these people from the CCTV footage or the eyewitness sketches report to us immediately. It is important to note that our investigation is still very recent and we are yet to find out more information. Our main theory is that the disappearances are the work of a very calculated group of killers. However hard it is to believe, it may be possible that the group had managed to somehow hide in the shaft and then somehow attack and dispose of the victims. It may not seem plausible, but it seems reasonable enough given the circumstances. Our second theory is that the victims willingly climbed out of the elevator shaft possibly aided by others. The motive is yet unknown, but they could have arranged for their own disappearances. It is unlikely, however, as the majority of the victims led a happy and loved life with no reason to arrange such a drastic measure. It is, of course, possible that the victims were lured out of the shaft by gunpoint and then somehow removed and or disposed of. Since the case has garnered media attention, we have received hundreds of tips and theories regarding the missing people. We are exploring every line of inquiry possible, and we ask that if you have any information, to please call our special hotline. Thank you for your cooperation. Detective Dave Cox, NYPD. I hope you weren't too frightened, my friends, because I'd love to see you all at my next campfire stories. Hit the little red button down below to subscribe and join me again next time around the fire.